welcome to Gamegasm. I'm Brent. I'm Jane. And it's that time of year again when Coward Duty's arrived. Yep, the latest one, Black Ops 3, is now out. So, does it introduce anything new? Or does it do exactly the same as all of the others and force the industry to yet again all collaborate making the same first-person shooter experience year after year? Let's find out. Soldiers deal. So it's out, like everyone on the planet knew it would be. We can skip the formalities because we all know what this plays like, so let's get right to the point. The first person shooter giant that has made every developer now conform to making exactly the same experience has released its latest bang fest in the franchise. And let's start with the campaign, because that's where everyone buys it, right? No? Just me then. The story is as you'd expect it to be, some bad douche plotting to blow shit up, conspiracy theories a traitor amongst your friends, most of which are played by celebrities. The story is quite good, although its delivery is the usual affair of being confusing and not very well laid out. At times I just forgot what the point to everything was. As far as length goes, it's pretty healthy and there's plenty of different set pieces that look different and play well. I wouldn't say it's the best story from the Call of Duty universe, but hey, it seems nobody gives a crap these days about telling a good tale. Peter Molyneux does. Yeah, okay. Hi, Peter. It's becoming somewhat of a thing these days to skimp on the single player experience, and whilst Black Ops 3 delivers some well-polished cool moments, it never feels like you get into the characters or the story. I can't remember any of their names, and there's not any character in there that you could get attached to. But onto the gameplay, and here's where it adds some pleasant extras and abilities that freshen up the somewhat stale first-person shooter genre. The campaign has been designed to support four-player co-op, so the levels are bigger and offer many routes through each of its sections. To make the campaign more compelling to those that are interested in the multiplayer aspect of the game, the campaign now features its own progression system, where players can unlock different weapons and gear. At the start of the game, you get injured in combat. Injured? Injured! He gets his arms ripped off and his leg bent the wrong way. Okay, so he's in a bit of a state. So what happens? Yeah, you guessed it. A company saves him and installs a load of really expensive tech into him and resurrects you as a super soldier that can see into people's brains. That escalated quickly. I know, right? I struggle to change the clock on my oven, never mind what this guy's going through. So these enhancements allow you to use cyber cores. These do things like let you hack turrets and send out a swarm of nanobots, or as I prefer to call them, death bees. To attack and burn your victims, stun enemies, blow up robots, and a whole plethora of other parlor tricks to make your combat more interesting than duck and cover and occasionally shoot, which rest assured there is still plenty of. The weapons are very well designed and sound good, which is important as they are in constant use. Being able to customise these guns too is really nice, and sorting out your own custom loadouts is all in there as well. Another perk of now being a super soldier is being connected to the rest of your squad. When your DNI is activated by pressing right on the D-pad, it can show you the positions of enemies through walls, and if your teammates spot anything, it gets marked for you to see too. Quite handy as Black Ops 3 is not shy about throwing tons of enemies at you. It also has a night vision mode for those, you know, dark moments. Interestingly now, there is another difficulty setting after Veteran, simply branded as realistic. Now what could be harder than Veteran you ask? Well, this mode basically means if you get hit by just one bullet, you are dead. Fuck! Yep, one bullet and you're a gunner. Well, sod that. Kudos to anyone that gets through it on this mode. Perhaps want to try with four friends? Yeah, after unlocking all the best gear and hoping for a miracle. I managed to get through the first couple of areas in the game on this setting, but all too quickly I hit a brick wall and just couldn't progress. Good luck if you're tough enough to try it. The multiplayer is exactly as you'd expect it to be, but it adds a new momentum based we made it like Titanfall system. Wall running, jump boosts, mantling and slidey slidey good times. It also features a ton of customization features to the weapons, including allowing players to paint custom designs onto certain areas of the guns. Each of the game's 9 specialists have a unique weapon or ability too, including a bow and arrow which is just awesome. You level up like you should and will face a ton of underage kids shouting abuse at you as they argue over kill death ratios and how unfair a certain weapon is. So there's that to enjoy too. And we've saved the best for last, and really the zombie mode has gone all out. It's amazing. The style, design, gameplay mechanics. You know what? It's got Jeff Goldblum in it playing a magician. Do I need to say more, really? Uh, this gun, it's no longer loaded. Hearing his one-liners is just hilarious, whilst you take down zombies in the various maps. It has an air of Bioshock about it too, and plays how you'd want the zombie mode to play. And it's really nice that they included it on the disc and didn't ask for any money for it. Thanks Treyarch, thanks! The graphics haven't really moved on and doesn't do anything pleasing for the eyes. 
This is probably mainly to do with it now supporting 4 player co-op and sacrificing visuals for the all important 60 frames per second. However we can't help but feel it's a big step backwards. I mean even things like doors opening isn't as good. I know that sounds really petty but it's just one more thing that shows they really stripped out a lot of the small touches that were in the others. The zombies mode is a fresh style that is welcomed but overall this looks like a cold twitch shooter like all the others. The character models are good and motion capture is spot on but it's nowhere near the level of detail that Advanced Warfare had. Most of the level environments are superb though with a firefight taking place in a biodome being quite remarkable. But most of the other levels are dark and dingy corridors in abandoned refineries or facilities etc and aren't very wondrous. It kinda just looks like any other shooter at times with the occasional reminder that this is indeed a Call of Duty game. That reminder being the totally pointless on rail sections. Exactly. The sound is overall pretty good, although there were some moments where I felt explosions should have sounded bigger than they were. There was a part where a building falls over and it didn't really make much of an impact where the sound was concerned. Other nitpicks are based around the voice acting, which from most of the cast is okay, but the guy that voices the player character is about as wooden as uh, uh, a wooden thing. You think they had something to do with these murders? Really, is this the level of voice acting that we can expect? I know the devs don't seem to give a rat's ass about the campaign anymore, but can we at least make sure that the people they get to act in it are all at the same level? It's like putting Boris Johnson in a starring role next to Brad Pitt. Very nice. Despite all this though, I enjoyed it. It has the top end level of shooting goodness that we all know, with some bits and bobs added in. It very much feels like, here you go, this year's Call of Duty, and we're awarding it with a Gamegasm 6. Now come on, be fair, Ghosts did introduce us to highly detailed dog models and fish with AI. Oh yeah, they swam away from you. What a time to be alive. Whilst not as impactful as other entries in the series, I'm sure it'll break sales records, piss a load of die-hard fans off and please a bunch of others. It's the Call of Duty way and we're happy it's still kicking around. So grab your controller, prepare your list of online insults, strap on a headset and get going with Codblops 3. Codblops! Codblops! And there we go with Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Yeah, I mean, well, they, they, it, it's it's Black Ops, you know. It's, it's the same solid Call of Duty formula. Yeah, I mean, it, do, it does work all the same, you know, like the controls are tight and twitchy as you'd expect them to be. It's fast, it's frantic. And the newest thing is obviously the, the campaign with the four player uh, co-op. Yeah, yeah, and the new progression system for the campaign when you level up and, yeah. you know, earn stuff. It gives you more of an incentive to still play the campaign. Exactly. A lot of people don't play it. Unfortunately, um, I mean, that's what I like about it, to be honest. I mean, I'm not into, like, really, like, multiplayer gaming, and I know a lot of people aren't. I know there's a lot of people that are, which is yeah. why these games sell so well, but for those people that aren't that into multiplayer, this one can kind of feel like, oh, it's all focused on the multiplayer. Yeah, especially yeah. When, when we try to play it at to begin with, we had to wait for the zombies, then the multiplayer, and then the campaign was the last thing last to install. Thing, yeah, which so. was kind of like you can tell that that is the order of the day these days, which is a shame because I still enjoy single player, like linear experiences with a great story and great characters. I, I still, I, I still love that, and I'm sure there's loads of people out yeah. there that still love that. But unfortunately. They don't sell. <laughs> no. Well, at least not as much as these people want them to sell. So, bit of a downside. And yeah. obviously, with the four-player thing, they kind of suffered a bit on on graphics, didn't it? Yeah, some of the graphics and some of the animations weren't as like tight, if you like, from Advanced Warfare. No, so that, Advanced Warfare, Advanced Warfare, <laughs> Advanced Warfare had this kind of level of polish on it that was like it was like proper blockbuster budget. But this one. I know it's 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 uh, it's Treyarch, isn't it? I mean, it's it's reined back a bit, but but yeah, it can support four-player co-op with uh, split screen as well. So couch co-op isn't something you see a lot. I mean, no. even Halo Five took it out, and I mean yeah. that's one of the staples of the Halo series was I know. playing I mean, it, it multiplayer with your mates in the same room. But they took it out to focus on frame rate. Which is, you know, frame rate, okay, yeah, it's good and all, but it's not the be all and end all of gaming. See, I don't remember when this frame rate thing just happened. I mean, I just remember having an Xbox One and an Xbox 360 and a PlayStation 3 and not even mentioning frame rate. No. I, it seems like it's, when it's come to this next generation, that's the only thing gamers seem to be focused on. It's because the architecture of the new PC, uh, the new consoles is like PC, and that mm. that's the war with PC, because 
the you, PC gamers can't say, oh, my PlayStation's better than your Xbox. They have to say, my graphics card better than yours because I can do a higher frame rate. So I think <laughs> It's that, the new argument. Yeah, that <laughs> argument has now moved to the console generation. I might be wrong, and I'm probably getting a lot of hate right now, but I think that's what it is. Well, yeah, we can hazard a guess. You can't have a go at us for hazarding a guess, can you? No. 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 But no. you can go back and still play the original PlayStation, and I enjoy Crash Bandicoot without worrying about, oh, that frame rate dipped. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, well, are you a frame rate warrior? Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> but uh, or do you just not care? <laughs> Either way, let us know what you think about Call of Duty. If you have played it and bought it and like it, or if you're not, still not sure, like uh, drop us a comment down below and let us know your thoughts on the whole franchise. Uh, but that's uh, all the time we've got for today. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I've been Brent. I've been Jay, and we've been Game Gasm. Blobs. God blobs. God blobs.